So in the Bow Spring, we're moving, and we want to be able to move freely and powerfully. Please turn toward the camera. Bring your uh, hands into uh, double seeds. Now, all these shapes that we'll teach you in the next 10 days, the hands, the feet, all have specific forms for a maximum and optimal engagement through the arms and the legs. These are our elemental forms of the bowspring method. This is one of them. The hand is shaped like a seed, and here, both hands are touching and pressing. Now this gives the ability for the rib cage. Desi can widen the ribs and expand back and front, and the whole rib cage is fuller in this way. From here, take the hands out horizontally. The knuckles can point down. Though she's pushing down with the hands, the ribs rise up. Go to the side, lean to one side. So the actions of the bowspring are uniform through any position. So even though she's bending to the side, the shoulders still go up and apart. There's a widening. So this shoulder is not being pulled down. The whole shoulder girdle floats up. The outer elbow even slides up. But all the while, the hands can press down for the neck to get longer. Every position of the bowspring, the central channel, is long and free. Good, great. Come back up and let's do the other side. Lean to the left. From inside the ribs, widen and let the shoulder girdle float upward. In every bowspring position, the ribs, the upper part of the body is light. We never make the, this upper part of the body heavy. The bottom part, the roots, is dynamic and powerful. To be able to do that, Desi takes, pushes even from her feet and knees forward to get her groins deeply hollow and moving the hips back. That makes the glutes have a chance to be able to lift, and then she has power to, to spring and to move, to pulse. Good, and then inhale back to center. Good, please take a um, turn now this way toward me. Take a wide stance. Every movement in the bowspring method is very mindful. So we're trying to maintain this relationship between the heart, the hips, and the head with these curves in a way that is dynamic and open on the front and the back of the body evenly. From here, bend forward and touch the floor. So even though Desi just bent over, she didn't lose the relationship between the upper back fullness, a curve in the low back, and a curve in the neck. Bring the hands down to onto the floor this is called bright hands, and we'll be describing this in more detail. This is one of the elemental forms of the method. Then please step back onto your knees. Every position that the feet and the hands can make, like where the toes are tucked under, we have a definition for, for the form. This is called crouching feet. Bring your hands into hero feet. With hero feet, the top of the feet are on the floor, but the ankle, the front of the ankle lifts. And the specific actions of the feet and the hands, the purpose is to give uniformity of action for the legs and the arms. So everything starts to integrate into the central core, into the central axis of the body. Once again, the ribs are not only expanding, but they're light up away from the earth. And once this primary curve is inflated in light, Desi can also then curve the low back and curve the neck. From here, tuck the toes, lift the knees up, and again, the relationship is maintained. Turn both knees to the left, bring the right hip down, slide the right arm long,